How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another Pi game and Python tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at something awesome and something that a lot of people have tons of questions about. And um, right now, we're just going to be scratching the surface. We're going to get into collision. <laughs> we're going to get into collision detection specifically with rectangular objects uh, in, in this in this tutorial. It's very simple when we use Pi game. Um, the way I'm going to set it up to kind of keep track of it is just to actually have a sort of like a message system with the font that we just created in the last tutorial. Now we can now that we can display text on the screen, it'd be good to uh, kind of be able to have a message or at least know, be notified whenever something happens, or in this case, whenever there's a collision. So let's actually remove this text object and I want to define a new function and have a global variable setup. I'm going to create something called um, message and that's going to equal none for right now. And then I think we can go ahead and define a new function called set message. And that's going to take one argument text. And then we'll say, looks like I, I removed that line, but the uh, we can use the global message variable that we just have in the in the other uh, if statement, the kind of if guard that we have going on over here. Global message, we can set that equal to, I'm sure you guessed it, font.render text. We do want anti aliasing black, and we'll use the white background again. So since font is being called over here, um, this this uh, set message function should be able to recognize it. I'm not too sure if it will be able to, but hey, we're going to find out. Um, right now, we're going to go ahead and, ahead and set message to just a string. And what we'll do in our loop over here we don't need this window dot blit right now. We'll check if um, message does not equal a variable that will keep track of what the previous message was. We'll go ahead and set message to equal, I believe, message. So that way, whenever we display, or what we display on the screen will always be constant, and we will want previous message to be a variable that we can access. The previous message can equal none, and we'll actually, we are actually going to want that in our uh, set message function over here, previous message. We will set previous message to equal message. So now, we can go ahead and window.blitz message all the time. And let's actually run this to see what's happening. See if we get any good news or bad news. Nope, we got an error. What do we got here? Name.text is not defined. And that's in, oh, of course, that's right here. Message.getRect. Now message is going to equal a surface whenever we use the set message function up at the top here. Let's try that again. Okay, now there's no text on the screen, thankfully. But at any moment, we can, of course, run, even in the loop, let's say, if we had an event dot type, which in this case is, just for example's sake, game dot mouse button down set message you press down and now let's try and see how that works hopefully we'll have uh, you press down <laughs> that's so huge yeah, let's let's shrink down that uh, that font size let's bring that to uh, back to 30 like it was beforehand 230, that's my boy. That's my boy right there. <laughs> okay, now let's actually get into the collision detection between sprites. We've got some sprites right here. We've got a block, which is the brick that we've been running around the screen with the mouse, and we've got another block, which is that red kind of kind of square over at the top here. Let's actually put the red in the center. Let's put another block. Set position. Oh. Cool, I already have that right there. Let's put window width divided by two 
and window height divided by two. I believe that still has the same origin because that's built into the block itself. The, the origin is, is right there. Regardless, let's check this out. Um, now that we can run the code and see how that looks. Okay, now our, our red block is in the dead center of the program. Awesome. So, there is a special, special function that the Pygame has, and it's over in the uh, sprite submodule. So let's take a look. We have a function called CollideRect, and what that does is it will detect a collision between two sprites using rectangles. In this case, we're going to be testing one thing that we're colliding with and the other thing that we're colliding with, which in this case will be the block that we have and the other block that we have. So now we can test for collisions between two sprites using the Pygame rect collide rect function to calculate the collision. Intended to pass, intended to be passed as a collided callback function to collide functions, sprites must have a rect attribute. Well, in this case, all of our sprites are built with a, uh, a sprite dot sprite inheritance, so that will work just fine. What we can go ahead and now do is we can test if so pygame dot sprite dot collide rect with a block and another block. Go ahead and set the message to equal there is a collision. If there is not a collision, we'll set message to equal nothing. So that way it'll just look like there's a blank screen. Now if we run this code, we've got our thing over here. If I move to touch it, there's a collision. And if I move away, there is no collision. Okay. So one simple function in Pygame can tell us whether or not there's a collision, at least with these rectangles. But how do we resolve this? <laughs> We're going to be getting into that in the next tutorial, guys. Um, right now, this is just collision detection. Um, very, very simple function with these two rectangles in Pygame built into the sprite submodule. Super cool thing to do. And um, the way that we have set up with the message system right now, it will at least keep track of messages that are things... It, it won't reset the message variable all the time because we set up this previous message guard for it. That's a, a little good functionality and good optimization there. So right now, we've got something good. We've got something pretty nifty and, and, and nice. We can test if there is a collision. It's, it works as collision detection, and we're going to be getting into more stuff with that very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.